Hey, and welcome to The Better Drummer with Zach Covington. I'm Zach Covington. Today, we're going to talk about the five ride pattern variations that you need to know to level up your ride cymbal game. Let's dive right into it. Actually, before we dive right in, I want to give you all something absolutely 100% for free. It is my... F hey, Editor Zach here. Uh, I realized that when I was filming this video, uh, I had not thought through the fact that I was going to make a PDF for this video in particular. Uh, so... I had said while I was filming that you could get five, five jazz, jazz drum, drum grooves, grooves to, to get, get through the gig PDF, which I'll still leave down in the description, but I'm also going to give you uh, the follow along PDF for this video. Um, it's going to be down there as well, the five ride variations. It'll give you some notated examples, some exercises, as well as just a few more things in depth that you don't exactly get in this video. So go get that and uh, be a better drummer. Now, into the lesson. So, we're going to start off with a basic understanding of what the swing pattern or the ride pattern is, right? If you don't know what that is, I'll tell it to you and play it for you right now. It goes something like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four, and one. So that's the standard jazz ride pattern. We're gonna talk about five variations that we can do to this pattern. And we're actually gonna start with always having quarter notes as our bass line. So you'll see down beneath uh, quarter notes, right? Four quarter notes in a measure. That's what we're gonna start out with. And then our variations are gonna be adding an eighth note or two in different places within this measure. And you'll uh, understand and see as we go through the lesson. So here's what those quarter notes sound like, right? One, two, three, four. Variation number one is adding an eighth note right after beat one, so on the and of one. One and two, three, Four. That sounds like this. If you're at your drum set, practice that along with me for a few times. One, two, here we go. That variation might feel a little bit funny at first because that extra eighth note is not in the regular swing pattern. But once you start to understand how that feels to have it right on the and of one instead of on the and of two or the end of four, like in the regular pattern, it starts to get a little bit more comfortable and then you start to feel where two and four is naturally and then it all becomes pretty natural. Variation number two now is keeping the same variation number one but adding another eighth note on the and of four. So that would sound like this. Again, we're just taking variation one and adding an extra note to it so that on the end of the measure, the turnaround, we've got two times in a row of playing those double notes. Try it with me now. One, two, three, four. This one can be a little bit tricky because this might be the first time that you're putting two swung uh, groupings together, right? So like four eighth notes all in a row. So it might be a little bit tricky to understand that uh, and get that to be a little bit comfortable, but the more you do that, again, the easier it becomes. 
For variation number three, we're going to change things up a little bit. Instead of having those extra eighth notes on beat one and on beat four, we're going to move them now to beats two and beats three. So it's going to be the same uh, motion with our hands, just shifted within the measure. So that sounds like this. This one might come a little bit easier to you because it has that element of the regular swing pattern in it. So try it along with me now. One, two, three, four. Variation number four is another same concept of two swung groupings together. Now, instead of beats four and one or beats two and three, it's going to be on beats three and four. And that sounds like this. Again, this one might be a little bit easier for you because it has, again, that um, element of the swing pattern where that eighth note is on beat four. One, two, and three, four, and one, right? With the weird part being the extra note on beat three. Let's play it together. Variation number five, the last variation I'm going to teach you today, is basically taking the swing pattern but moving it all over by a beat. So the um, eighth notes are going to be on beat one, on the and of one, so one and two, and then on beats three, or excuse me, on the and of three. So one and two, three and four, which if you think about that, it just sounds like the ride pattern, but again, off by one beat. So that sounds like this. This one might be the hardest of all the variations so far because we're so used to playing the swing pattern how it normally is, and now we're totally switching it up. But try it with me and see if you can get it. And uh, once you get locked in, see if you can stay totally locked in with playing that pattern a beat off. And see if you can add your hi-hat. I've been playing my hi-hat on 2 and 4 just to sort of give some context, which I encourage you to do now for this exercise um, if you weren't already doing it before. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. But do it with me, and we'll see how it goes. Now for some context for you, um, there's not really ever going to be a time where you want to play one of these variations over and over and over again. You can play it and repeat it maybe t once or twice, but after that, the point of the variation is to go back to the main theme, uh, right? The ride symbol, the regular ride symbol pattern. So I'll give you an example of um, an exercise that we can play, sort of playing the different variations. Um, starting out with just quarter notes on the ride, and then I'll give you another example of um, playing those variations within playing the ride cymbal pattern. So here's that first example, playing the quarter notes and going through each variation um, that we talked about today.
So as you may have been able to hear, I went through each variation from one to five um, and played them for two bars each. Again, that wasn't very musical. So what I encourage you to do is maybe think about playing quarter notes and then inserting one variation in a bar and then maybe picking another variation, so variation four maybe, and then playing that one and then playing variation two and then going back to quarter notes. And uh, here will be sort of an example of all those with the swing pattern underneath instead of just quarter notes. So as you could probably tell, all of those variations that I played was just one of those variations we talked about today. Because it was paired with the ride cymbal pattern and wasn't exactly um, you know, two bars per thing, it was maybe one bar per variation, it was much more musical and had a lot more of a story to it, right, instead of just sort of sounding like a robot. So that's going to be it for today's lesson on the five ride cymbal pattern variations. I'm going to leave you off with a uh, little faster example of just all of the possibilities that you might have now with this uh, newfound knowledge. Real quick, if you liked what you saw today, hit that like and subscribe button as well as I try to put a new video out every Friday giving you all some information, either educational or a gear review. Um, and the subscribing helps me to feed my iguanas. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you when you're a better drummer.